So more details came out that may go a long way towards showing that Jonathan Majors was set up in his arrest. Um, TMZ just released the video surveillance footage that actually shows the woman who accused Jonathan Majors going clubbing directly after the alleged altercation. And, and some of the footage um, even shows that she possibly headbutted the DJ booth about an hour before heading back to Jonathan's place. So it's time stamped around 2.32 a.m. And we know according to the other reports that she showed up at Jonathan's place. Um, we'll go over that later, but she showed up at Jonathan's place around um, 3.23 a.m. So about an hour before she got back to Jonathan's place per the elevator camera footage. She possibly, it looks like it in the video, what do you think? It looks like she headbutted herself on the DJ table. There's also the fact that when Jonathan finally came home at around 11.13 a.m., he apparently saw that his alleged accuser was possibly out of it. She was lying on the floor of his closet telling him that she took a few sleeping pills. So allegedly, Jonathan calls 911 because in his mind, he was concerned for her well-being. But then, just moments after he calls for help, police body cam images show his alleged accuser standing without any assistance as according to an article by Daily Mail, Jonathan's attorney said that she was actually coached by police to say that Jonathan put hands around her throat and the police had brought it up first by mentioning it. She hadn't said anything on her own about hands around her throat, but the police mentioned it about 19 times. And then that same Daily Mail article, um, it's also the only article so far that gives details about how after looking around Jonathan's New York penthouse, the officers began to make comments about how large Jonathan's penthouse was. And then they even went on to question Jonathan on whether or not the penthouse was really his before deciding that they had probable cause to arrest Jonathan regardless of the fact that Jonathan was the one who actually called the police for assistance. There's also the fact that Jonathan's lawyers filed new court documents on April 19th with eyewitness statements, video footage, and phone records in an effort to completely exonerate Jonathan and have all charges dropped. And this evidence paints a very different picture about what happened during the hours before his arrest. But before these details were circulated, another article came out from Variety um, where they stated that there were multiple alleged accusers who were cooperating with the Manhattan DA's office. Now this article that Variety published didn't have any names of these alleged accusers. There were no details, not even a hint of a detail. Um, there was no verification that these accusers have actually come forward. They couldn't even get cooperation from Manhattan DA's office saying that there were more alleged accusers. Um, so basically, one line statement, a salacious statement, there are more accusers allegedly is now getting more traction than the headline that there is additional evidence that could possibly prove Jonathan's innocence. And it just made me think, who has it in for this man so deep that at the very thought that there was something that could possibly exonerate him, they are pushing this storyline, this headline, that there are, or there are possibly more 
accusers out there, more alleged accusers out there without any details at all. This is just a source told Variety, a source close to the case told Variety that there are more alleged accusers. And it reminded me of the Ime Adoka situation. Uh, remember last year, Ime Adoka, coach of the Boston Celtics, Neil Long's fiance at the time, he got caught cheating with one of the wives of the executives, one of the executives of the Boston Celtics. Now, it didn't matter that he had led them to one of their first wins, major wins with the championship game. It, it That did not matter. He got caught cheating with this redheaded wife and he was immediately put on suspension and his pay was docked by 50%. Now, some people came out in defense of him. Matt Barnes was one of them saying, what's the big deal? This happens all the time. The very next day, Matt Barnes then comes out again. I erased what I posted because this situation in Boston is deep. It's messy. It's a hundred times uglier than any of us thought. And that's why I erased what I said. Uh, some things happened that I can't condone, I can't back. And and so now everyone's expecting, oh my gosh, that it's so many women that, that he's probably been doing this with. Oh, it's, it's pregnancies. Oh, it's this, it's that. But all these months later, it's still just that one redheaded wife. So that's what it looks like is happening in this case with Jonathan Major, trying to overshadow what the actual issue is or what the actual truth of a situation is. So here's what actually um, they're presenting, the Jonathan's attorneys are presenting. They're saying that they have um, eyewitness testimony from the driver of the vehicle that Jonathan and his lady friend were in that evening. Um, they were coming back from, I guess it was a bar or something around 1 a.m. in the morning. And um, the driver witnessed Jonathan's lady friend scratching, ambushing him, doing all kinds of things, trying to steal his phone from him. So Jonathan's probably guarding his phone, you know, with his life. Maybe his back is even towards the woman. Um, and she is just going all out in an attempt to get the phone from him to see who it actually is who was just texting him. Because she's thinking that this he got another woman texting him. And no, she's not going to have it because he's her man. Right? So, Jonathan, according to the driver, didn't hit the lady back. Um, he didn't raise even raise his voice to the lady. He wasn't shouting, yelling, being an angry you know, he just asked the driver to please stop the car so he could get out. The driver stopped the car, watched Jonathan leave and continued on and took Jonathan's lady friend, I guess, to a club. They actually have video surveillance of Jonathan's friend going and partying the night away with some friends. So she's in this club, she's getting drunk, she's, um, you know, holding things with her hands, uh, holding champagne glasses, um, rummaging through her purse, um, all kinds of things, showing no signs of injury at all. And that's important because according to um, reports, the lady told police that Jonathan, that her, her finger had been broken during the altercation with Jonathan. But all signs to the contrary, she went to she went clubbing after the altercation with Jonathan and she's using said finger without any issues at all. So anyway, while she's at this club partying the night away, she's also texting Jonathan. She's sending him so many texts, calling him a cheater, saying that he can't do this to her, threatening to end herself over, you know, what she is thinking he's doing, alleging he's doing. And I mean, there's... John, no one knew Jonathan was actually seeing someone. So in Jonathan's mind, he's a whole single man out here in these streets. And in Becky's mind, that's not the case. She's thinking that it's all about him and her. That's it. But we know the most that we've seen of Jonathan even really interacting with, with a, a female is when he and 
Michael B. Jordan were on the, they were doing an interview for Creed 3 and the, the interviewer, uh, a very well-built woman walked past them and both of their eyes immediately zoned in to the badunka dump and they were having no problems with it. They were very interested in the figure of this lady, this interviewer, as she walked past them. That is the most that we've seen of anything that Jonathan may be interested in uh, when it comes to women. We did see him on the red carpet with this um, one lady who, you know, he just named as friend, didn't even give her name. <laughs> like this is a friend of Jonathan Majors. But we, we don't know that he has a girlfriend at all. But in this woman's mind, that's her man. So she sees that or believes that he is cheating on her. So she's sending these messages to him. Um, and it doesn't seem like Jonathan is responding at all. So eventually she goes home. It's 3.23 a.m. And by home, I mean she goes to Jonathan's apartment. Now, when she gets there at 3.32 a.m., she expects Jonathan to be in the apartment, but Jonathan is not in the apartment. So immediately, all this means in her mind is that he's doing exactly what she thought he was doing. She calls this man 32 times, 32 times. And she starts sending even more text messages, angry texts, jealous texts. And you can imagine, she's like, where the heck are you? Who you with? You better not be with such and such. She's sending these text messages. Basically, all of them are so angry and just jealous, but none of them are mentioning or accusing Jonathan of injuring her in any way. She's not mentioning any discomfort. She's not saying, how you gonna, you know, put his hands around her neck, but then be out with another woman. She's not saying any of that. She's just sending all kinds of jealous you know rants to him according to the evidence that jonathan's attorney said they'd submitted now here's the thing she's sending all of these texts and with the partial test messages that jonathan's attorneys released uh, a few weeks back that was they were supposed to basically prove that Jonathan didn't, didn't do anything, but everyone was looking at those test messages where she's saying, oh, it was all her fault. She told them that uh, she shouldn't have grabbed the phone. That sounds like a textbook case. So what were his lawyers thinking to even put that out there? There was actually a little snippet from Jonathan. And Jonathan had sent her a text message at 8 58 a.m. So that morning. So 3.23 a.m. She gets to the house, sees he's not there, calls him 32 times, sending all these other text messages. Jonathan texts her 8.58 a.m. saying, did you leave the keys? Goodbye, whatever her name is. He, um, he used her name in that goodbye statement because it was censored. So they don't want us to know who this lady is. So he said, did you leave the keys? Goodbye. Becky, you know, get out of here. That's what it sounded like to me when I read that. It's like, um, you're not gonna be blowing up his life when he's just not realizing his dreams because you think we got something going on more than we do. So leave my keys with the concierge and bounce, Becky. Bye, Becky. That's what it sounded like to me. And it's probably what it sounded like to her. But Jonathan as we see, was not using the brains. He needed to use his brains because instead of, you know, maybe calling a handler, maybe calling a manager, um, someone to go and check his apartment to make sure that it's not, she's not there, that it's an empty apartment. He goes to his house at 11, 13 a.m. that morning, expecting that she was gonna be gone. Now, this woman just allegedly flipped out on him in the car, sent him all kinds of messages, did, you know, send, saying all kinds of things. But he 
basically breaks with her over the text message and expects her not to still be in his house when he gets home? No, oh, no, 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 no. You do not go yourself to the house where someone should be gone at a star of his magnitude. He is just now getting his huge break where his name is up there. And instead of calling a manager, a handler, whoever, he goes to his apartment himself. Come on now, Jonathan, what? Well, we already know he wasn't thinking. So anyway, he shows up 11, 13 a.m. And he sees that she, instead of being gone, she's actually unconscious and half dressed on the floor of his closet. He saw that she had thrown up in his bed. Now, does that sound familiar to anyone? Uh, does it remind anyone of a case with high profile celebrity that happened last year, blew up on the internet around May last year, where someone had left something in the bed who also accused her celebrity movie star boyfriend, husband of doing all kinds of things? What's with this leaving stuff in the bed? That's, that's just, anyway. So he found, um, you know, she that she had thrown up in the bed allegedly and supposedly, I guess he was able to maybe tap her awake or something where she ends up telling him that she took a few sleeping pills. So Jonathan goes ahead and he calls the police. He calls 911, he calls an ambulance. The paramedics show up and this lady is basically saying that she don't know what happened to her. That's what she tells the paramedics. They're asking what happened, what happened. She keeps saying she doesn't know. Now, according to Jonathan's attorneys, when she was questioned by the police, there is actually actual body cam footage that shows the police kind of coached her into saying that Jonathan put his hands around her throat. And in those text messages that, that, that they sent out a few weeks ago, we saw her saying, that did not happen. I told them they do not have her permission to use that. That is not what happened. They're gonna remove that. So according to Johnson's attorneys, she was coached into saying that that's what happened. So with all this new information, Johnson's attorney is requesting that the DA review it as soon as possible and that he dismiss all of these charges against Jonathan. So do you all think this is enough to possibly exonerate Jonathan? Despite the rumors of possibly more accusers coming forward, is this testimony from the driver and the video footage of the woman clubbing and the text records the phone messages showing she called him 32 times there's a whole type of fatal attraction drama situation going on is that enough to exonerate him are his lawyers still not putting their best foot forward when it comes to this because it just seems like they could be doing more they, there are things that you lead with the things that you have actual proof of or you don't let anyone else overshadow what information you do have. Are they not pushing this out to the appropriate outlets? Who did Jonathan piss off that people are willing to push the salacious story rather than the truth? Or is that just how it is nowadays? Let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for watching.